What? It looks like this year's Grand Prix goes to this fantastic warrior! The Nickel Samurai! So please, tell me why you did what you did. Revenge. But all I care about is that Juan is dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. Yes, I was going to bring them my own kind of cruel revenge. I think that something bad was written on that note. Something bad for Juan, that is. Well, before she died, Celeste talked with a few of her friends. And she said, it looks like I got caught up with a truly insidious man. We got him. We know who bought that spy camera. Man and God. Your client. That's who, pal. Edgeworth. Did you hear that? At the end of the transmission, it sounded like a cat. I think... I know where Shelly Tequila is holding Maya hostage. You better get Angar a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime ball and not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever. Hello and welcome back. This is Queen3210 and we are about to start the final leg of this episode, or at least I think we are. So, seems Engard is a filthy, filthy scumbag. We almost were able to discover the location for Dig Killer. It was exactly where I thought it was. But he and Maya have escaped. And now it all comes down to the trial. Here's hoping that we can come out on the other side. Oh, this is deja vu. Oh, the scene from the beginning. How did it how did I get into this mess? <clears throat> it's far enough! You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix Wright! What? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. But, but I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. <laughs> I've had this dream before. Someplace, some time ago. As if this day was written into my destiny. Today, I'll stand in court as a lawyer. To prove a killer innocent. March 23rd, 9.43 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Hello? This is Phoenix Wright. You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life's riding on this on today's verdict too. Ugh. Now listen up! You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime ball and not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever! Maya. Phoenix? Phoenix! M Mia? Maya, how's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? She hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Mia, what, what am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of times are when you have to force your biggest smiles. But, but, you can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please. There's nothing left. Not here, not anywhere. Thank you. 
Ah, it's that cursed and guard again. Will you leave me alone? Look, don't call me anymore. I mean it. You're really mean, pal. Oh! Ah, Gumshoe. I'm really, really sorry. Where are you? Don't let me join the investigation team when we're chasing after the killer, pal. Then, you have some sort of lead? Sorry, but right now we've got zero leads on the guy. But we're not gonna give up. Gumshoe. Until the try is over, until the verdict is handed down, we're gonna do everything we can and find the killer. If we can get Maya out, then you can get in God the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. That's true, I could do that if they found Maya first. You got that? So you have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. I have to make the trial last longer? If you go at Mr. Edgewood with everything you've got, then you two can draw it out. Oh, now I get it. I believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Edgeworth can do it. So, believe in us. We're gonna give it all we've got, just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. As corny as that is, I can... that That's actually really sweet. It's the strongest weapon in the world, and you have it, have it in abundance. Yeah. Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through. I know it. March 23rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt and God. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Now, as I recall, we rec concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being what exactly was Miss Adrian Andrews' role in this murder. That is to say, is she really connected to the crime itself? Miss Edgeworth, if you would please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. Engard. And then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. The guilt of these actions are those from which she cannot escape. Mm, then you're saying that she's guilty after all? I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? It looks like a shell. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. An uh, assassin, you say? Yes. Juan Corrida was killed by a professional assassin. And the person who hired the assassin, his client, so to speak, is Matt on guard. Well, what a surprising turn of events! I would think it's become commonplace by now, Your Honor. I know what's going on this time. So I know that everything Edgeworth has said is true. But we still have to hold out as long as we can. At least until Maya's safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Now then, witness, your name and occupation, please. Uh, okay. I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor, underpaid action star. And what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's... I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him, in a way. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, Mr. Powers, please. You don't need to put yourself down so much. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, but I'm just kind of nothing, a nothing sort of guy. <laughs> On the night of the murder, you visited the defense defendant's room. Is that correct? It, yes. I... I didn't know that. Um, but you know, I didn't actually get to see Matt when I went in. All you need to do is answer what you've been asked. Now then, I would like you to testify about when you went to Mr. Engard's room. O okay. Sure. Visits to Matt's room. After the awards ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. He was talking with someone. At first, I thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. Hmm. Nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Powers' testimony. And talking with a bellboy is no big deal. What if one assumes that the person Mr. Ongard was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy? Well, what are you implying? Well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in for another sticky situation. Oh. A trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? But for us to find out more, we're just gonna have to charge in head first. Right? After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. The defendant's room? Why did you go there? Well, I'm his mentor, like a big brother, sort of, and I kind of wanted to say congrats. Well, what's wrong? Why did you stop? M mr Wright! Well, what is it? You... You're gonna try and trick me into a corner, aren't you? Huh? I... I know I'm just a poor, underpaid action star, but... But I... I'm not the killer! Oh, you poor, poor fool. Uh, no one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please, don't trick me. Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into the bad guy. Every time? Witness, I will personally talk to the defense at a later time. So for now, please kindly cooperate and continue with your testimony. S sorry so you went to the defendant's room, and then... Hey, wait a minute. And when and how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? Matt was standing there in front of the room, still in his nickel samurai outfit. Are you sure that was that was Matt and Guard? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the nickel samurai mask then. If that's the case then he really can't be mistaken. And... What was the defendant doing standing in front of his own room? He was talking with someone at first. He was talking with someone. At first, I thought it was the bellboy. At first? What do you mean by that? Well, he was in a bellboyish uniform and he had a bottle of juice on a tray. So, sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Uh, yeah, but... I didn't think it was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? So sorry, but I can't remember right now. I'm sorry. Guess I'm going to have to wait patiently on this one. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. You saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant, correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. Now, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? 
Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? But that's a perfectly normal thing to do. So how long did you watch the two of them? Uh, no more than a minute or two, I think. I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. So who are these guests you're talking about? You guys, of course. You and Maya and Little Pearl. I thought it'd be really rude since I invited you guys if I disappeared on you. So I went back to my seat pretty soon after seeing Matt in the hallway. This is like squeezing water from a stone. It's probably pointless to press further. Do you remember this incident? Did Mr. Powers leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. Maya was making such a racket in her hyper state. I ended up focusing on her. I see. In any case, from his story, he probably wasn't gone for very long. Eventually. At first. What do you mean by that? I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Hey, wait a second. Actually, Mr. Powers, only a few minutes ago you stated. Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip-giving incident itself? Oh! Yeah, that's it! You really know your job! Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor? This bellboy, he wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You mean about the bellboy, right? Matt gave the bellboy a tip. So he gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Uh, well, you see, Matt's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. How much it was? But that's when something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got in his pocket. And that's when I got my first look at the guy's face. It was I was really shocked. I'm afraid I don't follow at all. Sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by this event. I wonder which of his shocking moments I should ask about. Uh Maybe the tip because that seems it seems strange that he would view that as odd. The defendant is a huge star. He can afford to give generous tips, wouldn't you agree? Um, sure. But giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much? Would you please clarify for the court about how much you would say the defendant gave the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. And why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really, really fat roll of cash. Holy fucking shit. Yeah, that's suspicious, all right. Nobody tips a bellboy that much. A roll of cash? Oh, uh, well, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, now wasn't it? A very fat roll of cash? That can hardly be called a tip, your honor. Hmm. The judge is beginning to look awfully suspicious of us. You know what? We'll wait and see. There's nothing I can really object to here. I mean, who can argue that a fat roll of money isn't really odd? So supposing that roll of cash was not a tip, then what was it? Payment, Your Honor. Payment? For services rendered. Isn't it obvious? For the murder of Mr. Juan Corrida. Then, 
and the Bubble Boy the winner saw. Yes, he was the assassin. Hold your horses there. Mr. Edgeworth, you don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honor? I have here the card Shelley De Killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelley De Killer? He is the person the police special investigations team has been chasing for ages. I am certain that the person the witness saw was this very assassin, Shelley De Killer. But really? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just clicked in my head and I think I just figured something out. Oh? Actually, I saw that ball boy again later on that night. What? <laughs> Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Right away. This time, I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when that bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Corito's room. Now that I think about it, that bellboy didn't seem kind of out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. I mean... Thank you very much, that is all we need for now. Huh? But I'm not done. There's still more. Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. DeKilla. Then we shall see. Hmm. So the bellboy came out of the victim's room. And if that bellboy really was the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. Ha, 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 ha. This is no laughing matter. This time, I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And what time was it? Uh, well, I don't remember. The award ceremony ended around 8, right? And I went to Matt's room pretty soon after that. And then I came back. And then I went to the bathroom. So I guess maybe it was around 8.10 by then? You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Powers? So sorry. I thought I could maybe catch Matt and say my congrats. And that's when that bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Are you sure it was the same bellboy? Yeah. And how could you tell? All the bellboys wear the same uniform, after all. But, you see... Well, well, he had those stitches on his face. Ugh. So I'm pretty sure it's the same guy that was talking with Matt. Hmm. So which room did the bellboy come out of? Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Corita's room. The victim's room, huh? Yeah, the one with all the pretty flowers and the teddy bears. It was Juan's room, all right. Words cannot describe how screwed I am. Hmm. Let's continue with the testimony, shall we? Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Oops. Didn't actually mean to do that. Um, so what exactly was out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why the insipid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what damaging thing he's going to say next. Um, well, the bellboy was empty-handed. Empty-handed? That bellboy was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart and he wasn't holding a tray either. You'd call that a little strange too now, wouldn't you? I agree that it is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for our bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers' testimony slide? 
Um, you know what? I'm supposed to be stalling, so... There's nothing strange or unusual about an empty-handed bellboy. But there really, really is! There really, really isn't. If you two are done being school children, bellboys are for room service. There is no reason for them to be empty-handed, ever. Your Honor, I ask that the witness's previous statement be supplanted with this new one. Ugh, Hedgeworth. Are you going to do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious? I see. Very well, this court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please. Y yes sir I thought it was strange. It was kind of strange for a bellboy to come out of the guest room empty-handed So you're saying that it's suspicious for him to be empty-handed Yeah, really suspicious. I mean when I first saw that bellboy He was holding a tray in his hand and there was a bottle of juice and a wine glass on it. Juice? What kind of juice was it? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was tomato juice. If we could come up with some sort of reason as to why he would come out empty-handed. Some sort of proof. Then I think we can dodge the bullet on this one for now. Proof, huh? Sounds like another job for the court record. Okay, so he did say... Something about the glass of tomato juice. Objection! Mr. Powers. Y yes? You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that the bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but, isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches and, and... So, the baseball has stitches. Are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? Well, there's also, I mean, what about him being empty handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. This, this is the crime scene. There's a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Corita's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what is on top of that table in the lower right corner here. Anyone can clearly see that it was a tray of a bottle with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Corita's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty handed when he left. But, but, that would mean that the bellboy had seen and left a dead body in the room. Ah, but can you prove that Mr. Corita was already dead at that time? Oh, uh, but Mr. Ashworth? Yes? I blame you for leading me down this road! <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What's with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? Is there? The bellboy was empty-handed, or should I say empty-hand-ed. I recall you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Huh? What? That bellboy, he was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch black leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves. Why didn't you mention them earlier? Sorry, it slipped my mind. Ah, why does this make the bellboy look really suspicious? All right, I've got to focus. I can't get lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright. That bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So, a football is made of leather. Are you saying all footballs are suspicious because they're made out of leather? Well, well, that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. Uh, it 
seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. Okay. This is completely and utterly painful. Gumshoe, hurry the fuck up. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door, just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, went next went to the defendant's room? Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident? I'd say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please? Y yes your honor. After leaving Guan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on the mat's door, just like that. Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? Uh, excuse me? I may be a poor underpaid action star, but even I wouldn't stoop to spying. Well, I think the point is where you did watch all of this from. Uh, I think the point is, where did you watch all of this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, um... From the door of the bathroom with my left eye in a sort of sneaky spy like. I knew he was spying. Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly? What did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. He gave something to the person inside the room. Hold it. I said, hold it! Um. Okay. That's better. <clears throat> what kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Oh, um, okay. Hmm, I should probably ask him only one question at a time. Uh, ask about the person inside. So who took this something the bellboy handed him? Uh, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but... I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? Then you're saying you didn't see the person's face. Yeah. Well, it was Mr. Engard's room, correct? So it could have only been Mr. Engard himself, I'd say. And then, what did the bellboy do after that? Oh, so after he gave the person inside the room the thing, then the old guy just left without even going into the room. Let's go back to this one, because there were other options. He gave something to this person. Yeah. And what was this something? <laughs> if I remembered what it was, I would be calling it a something, now would I? Well, this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is all of this really important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of the utmost importance. Oh, crap. Another drink. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was the bellboy handed off. Uh, well, let's see. Um, I think it was... No... If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Y yes, sir. 
If I saw it again, I could say for sure, but I think it was some sort of wooden statue. Wooden statue? Wooden statue. Oh. Crap! Your Honor, what do you think about this witness's statement? Um, I'm not sure I follow you. It's clearly or contradicts the, um, I, I thought. You don't sound very sure, Mr. Wright. Objection denied. Could it have been this? should come from well speak up um it was me your honor what is it phoenix i have a feeling that something bad's about to happen once i show this mr wright if you have something to say please spit it out y yes your honor okay phoenix deep breath mr powers the something you saw was it this item Oh, hey! That's it! That's the something! Wow, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out! Hmm, I recall we found this at Martin God's mansion. At the defendant's house? What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Shelley de Killa assassinated Juan Corrida in his room. And then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then the bear being found at Mr. Engard's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Matt Engard is the killer's client. Order! 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 I said order! Mr. Wright, this is a most unfortunate turn of events for you. I yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's all right. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would have. Uh, I almost forgot that he knew about it too. Hmm. I think it's clear that there is no more need for us to continue this trial. I, I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Y yes, Mr. Wright. There are still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright. What questionable point would you like to explore further? How about the person who received the bear? There was one thing in Mr. Powers' testimony that was very unclear. And that is the identity of the person who received the bear. He gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear, we can't be sure of... Ah! Well, what is it, Mr. Powers? If you're going to scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Actually, so I remembered. Um, I remembered who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm. But, but, the arm. It was the Nickel Samurai's arm, I swear it. You've got to be kidding. Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. Order, order! It looks like you've dug your own grave. Yet again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. Yeah, me too. So the person who took this in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And as we all know, Matt Hungard is the Nickel Samurai. Thanks to the defense, we've made that all look clearer. 
What am I supposed to do now? Mia, help! You don't have time to act lost. You've got to find another angle to attack this from. Hurry! Now I will bring this cross-examination to... Your Honor. Again, Mr. Wright! We've already removed any and all questionable areas of this testimony. It's about time you were removed from this court, Mr. Wright. I have to find something. Even one more little point will do. There are... There are still questions left unanswered. What are you trying to pull? Oh. Well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright. What questionable point would you like to explore further? How about the bear? I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. The bear? Mr. Wright! This was found at Mr. Ungard's mansion. However, Mr. Ungard was arrested at the hotel that night. Which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh! I think your honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It is not possible that it has it was Mr. Engard who took this bear to his mansion. Well, why, that's very true! We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There was no way time-wise for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Phew. Disaster averted. <laughs> you haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Engard's mansion. We have this area completely surrounded. There is no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler. All this time he was D-Killer. Crap! D-Killer and Engard were working together, so to speak. And D-Killer was hiding at Engard Mansion as its butler. What a... Bold move. The bear figurine was brought back to Engard Mansion by D Killer himself. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, Engard had him t do so. I assumed because it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright. You've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Isn't there anything I can attack at all? I think we've heard enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion. As well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Mr. Matt and God. I see no reason for this trial to continue. Therefore, I will now hand down my verdict. Fuck! <sighs> you choose now to be confident? Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, now could you? I knew it would turn out like this. After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What do I do? I have to raise an objection. Because if I hear the verdict, it's game over. I will now announce my vote. There is only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. Your Honor, Right now, we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's client. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at the Engard mansion. However, it's possible this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you trying to say? Sorry, Adrian. What I'm saying is... It's possible a different person is D-Killer's actual client. The real client? Yes. 
Is this all you have? Now then, Mr. Rikes, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is D. Killer's real client and therefore the real murderer? I mean, I have to. I'm sorry. Adrian Andrews? Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Madame Guard for the murder. By wearing a spare Nickel Samurai costume. Oh! Then, then the Nickel Samurai's arm that I saw? That could have very well been Miss Andrews. Well, what about Mr. Ungod? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figure at this figure at Mr. Ungod's mansion. It was a well-laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Nah, they ain't buying it. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount this its possibility either. Mm. What is with this trial? I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin the guilt on someone else. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not something petty. It's murder of all things. This is to save Maya. This is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Order, order, order. All disrupted parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor. For the benefit of the defense, I am willing to play along with his what if game. His what if game, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even you must have thought it strange and wondered, why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. D Killer did specially, specially bring that bear to end guard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. I see. Well then, the court will take a short ten minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. March 23rd, 1154 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. I was fully expecting a to be continued there. Ha 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 ha. Oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? And, but I never thought in your desperation you'd try to pin the guilt onto Adrian. <laughs> mm, I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick! P Pearls? Wait, where's Mia? I... I don't know. A really strong power suddenly called her away. Maya. A really strong power? Your phone is! It's from Gumshoe. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Y yeah, sort of. We just barely la found something to latch onto. Phew! That's good, pal. And what about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where D-Killer and Maya are? Um, uh... We, we still don't got any leads, but... What?! We don't have any more time. If we just had one, even a single clue would be helpful. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself, I've got to keep the trial going until Maya's been re rescued. But 
have I just run out of all luck all this time? Is all of our hope for not? A tent? Huh? A tent? I could see a circus tent. Mia? It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now. But I could see a circus tent outside the window about 300 feet away. Gumshoe! Is there a circus in town right now? There's only one, pal. The very big circus. Maya is somewhere within a 300-foot uh, radius of the main tent. Well, wait! Okay, hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map. About 300-foot radius from the main tent. Hurry! And... And... I could see a mailbox under the window, just outside. Gumshoe! There's also a mailbox. Eh. Okay. What else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but... It was very it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. It felt like I was in an old office building. Maybe the third floor or so. Hi, Hada! An old office building. Good stuff, PL. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, PL. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'll call you later. So don't let your battery die, okay, PL? I'll call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, PL? Mia! Maya's not hurt, right? She's in pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Come, Shu. Please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya is rescued. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. Oh! We're still continuing. Okay, cool. March 23rd, 12.05 p.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Court will now reconvene. D. Killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real culprit. Now then, pros the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You've seen it before? That's right. It's only natural that the witness has. Miss Andrews, could you please enlighten the court to this bear's secret? All right. Why? Why does she... Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. At its center is a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item. Wanna bet the suicide note's in there? Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell that it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. So this figurine... It's a container of sorts, is it? Yes. Looks can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is superb craftsmanship. Oh, yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Looks like there really was something to that bear after all. And here we go. Time to feel like a horrible human being. Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. A puzzle? That's right. Mm. But it looks like an ordinary figurine. True enough. 
To people who don't know, I'm sure they'd never guess that this was a puzzle. So what kind of puzzle is this exactly? If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. So you can take it apart? And how would one go about doing that? Well, you first turn its tail to the right and then push it in. Oh, yes, I see! After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Ooh, this is most interesting. A boy and his new toy. It's like he's five all over again. Oh! Don't mind me. Go ahead and carry on. I think he's lost it. So what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? At its center is a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item. And how do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. Then this... This was a present from you? That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it would be perfect for one. So it was a present for Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue with your testimony. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. So who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Only the two of us, Juan and myself. It was a souvenir from, Swi from Switzerland. So I doubt there are that many people with this same kind of bear in this, in this country. Well, this looks like it can be easily broken. Especially if someone wanted to get what it's at what it's... Especially if someone wanted to get at what's inside. Well, it's a toy. But it can never be the same again once it's been broken. You really can't tell that it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container or a jewelry box? I never told anyone. And as long as Juan never told anyone either, then only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? Then of course that means Mr. Engard didn't know, right? I think this is about all I'm going to get for now. Figurine has been updated in the court record. A wooden puzzle with a hollow inside. Only Corita and Andrews know how to open it. Well, Mr. Wright, I think even you have come to realize that there is one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. This bear is actually a jewelry box. Hmm. Now that we have agreed to this point, there is only one logical question that can come next, and that is this. What is inside this box? What's inside? That's right. That's what we are going to find out next. Witness? Yes? You are the only one who can open this. Please. There's a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. All eyes are on Miss Andrews. Oh. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? What is that? It looks like a note. I don't think we need to guess at what that is. Do we, Mr. Wright? It's the suicide note. The suicide note? The suicide note left by Juan Corrida's former manager, Celeste Inpax. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts. But just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, Juan Corrida himself. It seems Celeste Inpax had very beautiful handwriting. And she... And she just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is the most definitive... This is most definitely the note she left right before she died by suicide. Order! 
Witness, did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public. But I couldn't find it anywhere. Because it had already been taken by D. Killa. Everything is going at Mr. Edgeworth's pace. So now that the suicide note has been found, what's the next logical question? What's written on the note? That's right. At least, that's what I would like. That's what I would think. Now then, I believe it is only appropriate the contents of this note be made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it. And I was going to burn it. For her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I cannot allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could re please read the contents of the note aloud. Very well. The judge's voice rang loud and clear throughout the deathly silent courtroom. In her note, Celeste Impacts left us a record, record of all that had happened to her about being used and then thrown away by Engard. About being engaged to Corita and Engard's role in destroying that. And about how she decided in her despair to end it all. And that's all Miss Inbox had to say. There is one more thing I would like to say. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. Engard. Then, what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Juan was going to make the contents of the note public. After the post-ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. My word! Mountain God values, above all else, his refreshing like a spring breeze image. Which is why he had to stop this note from being made public. At any cost. Celeste's suicide note has been added to the court record. Sungard's <laughs> father, the woman, killed herself. And this time, he even went so far as to kill someone to stop him from revealing that. How terrible. What a selfish person. I guess there are slimeball lawyers out there who will defend these creeps, too. <laughs> there is no room for doubt here. Mr. De Killer's client's goal was to obtain the suicide note. And the only person who needed this note that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget that the bear with the note inside was found at the defendant's house. Seems that we have come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish, and he deserves no pity from anyone. Ugh, how am I supposed to escape from this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Gumshoe hasn't called yet, so you know what you must do. I know. I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay, there are two deadly pieces of evidence, the figurine and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of the situation through those. The gavel is already in the judge's hand, Phoenix. Hurry! Suicide note or the figurine? Which one? Objection! Please wait, Your Honor. Oh, man, look at that lawyer. He's still going at it. It's like he doesn't care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. I think your honor believes that Madame Guard killed in order to obtain this note. No, yes, that is correct. But that seems a little strange. In fact, I think there is a contradiction here. This note was hidden by Mr. Corita until the night of the murder. If that's the case... I say that Madame Guard could not have known what was written on this note. Oh! I didn't think of it that way. Exactly. But I did think of it that but I did think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. 
No one in their right mind would kill for a note without first knowing what it said. Order! 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 You make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. <laughs> I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Oh? Huh? The defense seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. Fuck. I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It is a very small video camera, Your Honor. This type of camera is commonly no used as a means of spying. Sp spying? What the? I thought that spy camera was in my possession. Martin Guard and the victim both thought of the others as their biggest rival. They even went so far as to use this type of item to find each other's weaknesses. And? The victim, Juan Corrida, was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Matt on guard. Order! Order! <clears throat> Mr. Wright! Y yes Your Honor? You... Don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities! W well Sort of. Sort of is not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I see you are confused, Mr. Wright. You're probably thinking, but I have the camera that was stuck in the stuffed bear's eye. But this camera that I have is not that same one. Last night, I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this... Gumshoes bug sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. But on God's fingerprints were on there! Well, Phoenix, looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? Well, I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Ongard learned of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, hey, now what's the lawyer thinking? Mommy, is that man the bad guy killer? The bad killer guy? Shh, stop, don't look at him. Wait, he's sweating, it's just so, ew, nasty. Phoenix. Yes, Chief? Have you figured out what you're going to do next? What I'm gonna do next? Does running away like a frightened child work? I know it seems like Mr. Edgeworth is very close to putting a lid on this case, but... In his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one very important thing. The fact that the camera is only programmed to run for an hour after 8 p.m. Well? What is it, Maya? Mia? There's a piece of evidence that he really should investigate. Something he should investigate? I would really hate to see the good prosecutor get scolded. For not remembering to look into the item when he had the chance. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? Alright, I think this time we finally understand everything. Well, Mr. Wright, you don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that Maya's talking about? Can I figure out what it is that still needs to be looked into? Or should I let it go? Obviously, we've got to stall for time, so more evidence. Excuse me. I have an objection, Your Honor. <sighs> hmm. That was about the weakest objection I've ever had, Mr. Wright. Objection! Your Honor, the defense has no intention of letting this go so easily. Oh, you, be you are beginning to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, this is not like you at all. Hmm. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, isn't that what I just said? So you're telling me that I forgot something? You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth. 
but there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. Only thing I can think of. Take that. that is Miss Impax's suicide note, right? Who knows? I mean, sure, the suicide note was found inside of this bear. But this bear was in my possession until only a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting on this suicide note has yet to be analyzed. Oh! So, as to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impacts or not, that has yet to be even remotely confirmed. Mr. Wright! You can't seriously be suggesting... Mr. Wright. You... Are you saying this suicide note is a fake? Miss Andrews, you were the one who tried to pin this murder on Mr. Engard. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into this bear? How dare you! Objection! Your Honor, the defense is in indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There is no evidence leaking the wit witness to the suicide note whatsoever. But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who could solve the big puzzle is the witness herself. Ah! Miss Andrews, you wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Matt on guard. I... I did no such thing. Right, if you're going to pronounce the suicide note a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your theory. Objection. Mr. Edgeworth, you were the one who presented this scrap of paper as evidence. That means the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution. Ah! That's enough! Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on this suicide note? It is as the defense has stated. The handwriting has yet to be analyzed. If that's the case, seems that yet again we have reached a point where a verdict is impossible. Impos- That's impossible! This isn't good, Phoenix. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. I didn't want to have to do this. I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defense further investigate. Handwriting analysis might, but that's just the lawyer trying to buy more time. And guard is guilty. Look, any idiot can tell you that. I think we've reached the end of the line. Guilty! 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 What, what is that sound? It's Gumshoe. Hello, Gumshoe? <sighs> what is with him? And what's with that sigh? Where's Maya? What happened to the D-Killer? He, uh... He got away. What? I'm sorry, pal. I really am. I don't know what else to say besides I'm sorry. I wish there was some way I could make it up to you. I really do. A anyway, what's going on? We found his hideout, pal. But the two of them were already gone. This is terrible. I'm gonna keep looking for him, pal. Don't you worry. I just need a little more time. But... Don't tell me we don't... We don't have any more. Guilty! 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 Do you hear that? They're calling for his head. Mr. Wright, I can't. For us to come so far. Oh! But what is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. I, I can't do that. Mr. Wright, would you please get a hold of yourself? 
Y yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may take your phone calls after. Hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch. Take that. Mr. Edgeworth. <sighs> Please, you gotta buy us a little more time. Court is in session. Damn! Wow. <laughs> I mean... I wouldn't expect anything less, sadly. <gasps> I'm sorry, Your Honor. You were saying. Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I am reluctant to do this, however. It appears that I have no choice but to suspend today's proceedings until tomorrow. I... This time, I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Objection. Thank you, Edgeworth. Please wait, Your Honor. E Edgeworth? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I humbly request another 30 minutes of Your Honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary tests on this piece of paper in that time. Mm. But can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, Your Honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourned for today and then reconvene tomorrow? 30 minutes, please, Your Honor. That's all I am asking for. Please, Your Honor. Very well. At the prosecution's request, this court will now take a 30-minute recess. But be advised that I will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. This court will now take its final recess of the day. Oh, still not a to be continued. March 23rd, 2.04 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Right. Well... What's going on with Maya's si situation? D-Killer, it looks like he got away again. 30 minutes? We can't find her in that time. Ugh. Report. Ah! Is there Mr. Edgeworth? We don't have time to spit it out. But right. It looks like we just missed them, sir. But D-Killer left a few things behind by accident in his rush to get away. A few things. Can we use any of them as evidence? Ho, ho, ho. I thought you'd ask, pal. <laughs> I got the things he left with me right now and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. We don't got that time to wait for this guy, sir. When those guys went looking, I swiped the stuff and ran. What? Well, I'm not a detective anymore, so I had to. I'm really sorry, sir, but I gotta put the line on hold, law on hold for now. Sounds bad. Hope he doesn't get in too much trouble over this. With my hunk of junk car, I'd say I'll get there in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. Uh, all right. Just, just get here in one piece. I'm on a mission and no one can stop me now, sir. No one. I'm pulling out of the st all the stops and running every red light. Items left by the murderer, huh? Maybe there's something among them that will be decisive enough to end this. What the fuck? Hey, what's wrong? Detective Gumshoe, answer me. No one can stop me. Oh fuck. No! Well, what happened? It sounded like he had an accident. I'm guessing his cell phone broke as well. What? What was he thinking? We've got to hurry and call for help. But we have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken, and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. Also, 
we don't get those items before they do, the police will take them, p take possession of them. No, we can't let that happen. Well, if there's a way we can find out where he is, then we stand a chance. Oh, Francisco! You're gonna help me whether you like it or not. Why, oh why did Gumshoe have to get into an accident now? Is there any way to find out exactly where he is at this time? Yep. That's right. There is a way. What? How? I'm sure we can find out where Detective Gumshoe is through this. Okay. Why are you bringing up Francisca at a time like this? Oh! I see. I'll try to get in contact with her. The chances are slim, but she's all we have. Francisca. Will she even want to help us? Edgeworth. What is it? I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client's guilty. But what I'm doing now, I'm pinning the guilt onto someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say, defense attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right. It doesn't suit anyone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, that can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict? Is Prosecutor Edgeworth here? Yes, Bailiff. There's a phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. They're probably finished with the handwriting analysis. I have to go take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it is you must do. Now it's to be continued. Three for three. 